What does it mean to be engaged in today's workplace? How do we inspire, inform, and connect a working community? How do we build a culture of irreplaceability, trust, and listening to keep people on board and rowing together? Welcome to Post-COVID Leadership Advice. This series is all about building a workplace culture where people feel heard, supported, informed, and connected. This is a roadmap for leaders at any level, at any organization. Flow. What is flow? It's not that time of the month. It's something else. It's a term that was coined uh, in the 1990s, and it's a state of working uh, and being where you're totally encaptured by the process. So you're playing a musical instrument, you're meditating, you're um, writing, um, you're reading, uh, you're in an athletic activity. You're totally absorbed in the work and you don't feel the time going by, you don't feel hunger, thirst, pain, uh, you don't care about noises uh, in the background, um, little kids asking for juice, you don't hear any of that, this can be not always a good thing, uh, you don't hear your phone going off, you are just completely uh, absorbed in the task that you're doing. This is the state of flow. This is a highly effective way of working and it requires a good solid amount of time to get into this state, to work at this state, and to slowly get out of this state again. Now, in our current working environments, we do not have time to sit somewhere for an hour and be totally focused, unless you have a very particular uh, kind of work. The expectation is, is that you are always available, you're always on, your phone is going bing, 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 your incoming emails are going bong, 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 uh, your incoming messages are going deet, 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 you have sounds coming at you. You have visuals popping across your screen all the time and you're expected to answer right away. If you have a, a, an, an urgent email, the expectation is you're dropping everything and you're doing that. And this is creates a state of mind in the average worker where we're scattershot, we're just all over the place, we're stressed out and we forget things. We um, don't have our full cognitive abilities with us. Uh, when you are in this state, you are also very short-tempered. You can be rude uh, to colleagues without even knowing it. Um, you forget important details that are very, very important uh, in your flow. It You lose IQ points when you are in a state of constant interruption. You have about 40% of your cognitive ability when you're constantly interrupted, when you have to task shift every five minutes or 10 minutes or you have little blocks of time to do certain things, you have uh, to, let's say, transition to the new task, which will rob you of a couple of minutes of time. And then if the task itself is only five minutes, then two of those five minutes are spent just transitioning. So those two minutes are essentially wasted. And this is not how you get good work done. The trouble is, the trouble is in our current working space, we create the opposite environment for flow. And flow is really the way we get our best, highest quality work done. And it's when we are focused, it is when we operate with 100% of our cognitive abilities, we remember things, we are calm, we are able to speak in a normal tone of voice to our colleagues because uh, we are not stressed out and uh, um, completely overwhelmed. And this is not something that just happens by accident. C flow has to be created. In the typical working day, we tend to check our inboxes about 74 times, and we tend to check our smartphones about 2,600 times a day, every day. And this can make us crazy, especially when there are things that we are expected to do. Okay. Tip number one, meeting free day. This is really hard because there's always going to be this urgent thing that we have to meet about on a Friday. Of course, there's going to be that. But if there's the cultural understanding in the team or the organization that one day a week, we don't have meetings, we just get our work done. It's hard for managers to wrap their heads around this one. I can't tell if people are doing their work. Well, generally they are. 
uh, because your results driven and you'll know Monday morning if that report was finished or not. But one day where you're not expected to answer emails, you're not expected to answer phone calls, you're not expected to attend meetings. It's one day where you focus on the actual work. You can do that from home, you can do that from the office, it doesn't matter. But you have a full day where you create the silence, the vacuum that is needed to get into that flow state. That means you don't have the expectation of talking to that person. That person might reach out with questions, but that's a very, very different thing than having a pepper spray of meetings during the day where you're back to back. You don't have the time to actually do your work. And this also creates the phenomenon of allowing people to be focused at meetings. So when you have your meeting free day, when you're actually doing your work, that doesn't bleed into your meeting days as readily or as frequently because you have that time to focus. And the expectation is, is that you're in a meeting, you're present in the meeting. You're not frantically switching off your camera so you can quickly write an email or answer your phone uh, and then switching back on your, your microphone or your uh, camera uh, to rejoin the meeting. And of course, you've missed 90% of the meeting. Uh, this doesn't help anyone. It doesn't help the person in the meeting. It doesn't help all the people around them. But having that meeting-free day really does separate the tasks so you can be present at meetings and you can be present with your work when it's time to do the actual work. The next thing is silence. Building in silence. That means switching off the phones, switching off the sound on the computer, having a, a barrier between yourself and the outside world so you can really get the work done that needs to be done without being interrupted by noises. Noises are incredibly disruptive. I also mean visual pollution. Those pop-ups in your screen that are telling you, bing, 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 it's time for a new meeting in 15 minutes, bing, bong, here comes another email that you have to focus on. Get rid of the sound, De deactivate those notifications. Probably you don't need them. You probably know that you have a meeting coming up. You probably know that there's an incoming mail in your box. You don't need to see that right at this moment because then you're pulled out of your state of flow and you're transitioning. And remember, every time we transition, we lose about anywhere from a minute to two minutes of focus time because we have to work our way into the task all over again. And this takes time. Your brain is actually not that quick, not like a computer. So you create the space by building in silence. And this means reducing unplanned interruptions. If there is an urgent thing that absolutely came up that has to be done now, something happened, some gasket blew and something needs to be fixed right away, of course, there are exceptions all the time. That's normal. But if the normal state is no interruptions and that everybody sticks to this, then that is actually the guiding principle and everything else is an exception. And I think it's important uh, to make that very, very clear, written uh, or visually when you have your team charter. We shall have no interruptions during those meeting free days or even those meeting free hours. So if you don't have the chance to reduce your unplanned interruptions, block time. If you need to block two hours, block meeting times in your uh, agendas so that you don't have that time disturbed and you're not pulled into something new or taking a phone call. You switch off all your stuff. You, you switch off your phones, you disable your notifications, uh, you don't attend meetings, you block those two hours that you need so you can get that work done without any uh, new things coming along. The other thing that really disturbs our concentration is email. Every time you CC somebody in a chain, somebody has to read that email. Even if you read the first two lines and you're like, ah, oh, I don't need to know this and throw it away. That's still time. That's still time that is taken, that takes us out of our flow state. So if we are very careful about sending emails or texts that doesn't include everybody, uh, it definitely helps everybody who's in that chain have a little bit more space and a little bit more time to, to have their flow. And then we also need to manage our urgency. Are things really that important? Of course, if there's flooding in the basement, drop everything, get a wrench, fix the flooding, fine. But not everything is that level of urgency. Uh, there could be tasks that you can say at the very outset, hey, 
this isn't urgent, but when you have time, it'd be great to get blah, blah, blah numbers in a report. Or, hey, when you have time, maybe sometime next week, let's get that slide together on this and that. These are things that are slow burning. State at the very beginning, hey, this is not urgent. If everything is urgent all the time, and every time you get an email, it could be something urgent, then that also disrupts our state of flow because you have to have your notifications on if there's this level of urgency at the company all the time that we're always dropping everything we're doing so we can go fix whatever it is that's erupting somewhere. Well, guess what that does to our state of concentration and our flow. We can't switch off our notifications that way. This is a mindset that we have a system of doing things. And most of the time, if there's no huge emergency or gasket leak in the basement, things can be managed in the workflow. And if there's no crisis, then most of the work can be done in a structured way. So urgency shouldn't be necessary all the time. And then we can look at our emails in a very different way. When we see that notification of something coming in, we can say, well, chances are it can wait an hour until I'm finished in my current state of flow, which I need to give my best work for this assignment that really requires creative thinking, it can wait an hour because I know that it likely will not be extremely urgent. And if it were urgent, there would be another way of reaching me that would not be email. So by managing the urgency and having systems to tackle workflows in a timely way that's consistent will also just reduce everybody's stress levels and you cannot have stress levels and flow at the same time. So that's a little bit about creating flow and enjoy your silence. Thank you for being a part of this episode. Subscribe, follow, so you never have to miss another one. These ideas are based on the Comic Books for Executives series. Go to postcovidhandbook.com 